The Volvo S90 is due to launch here next month. Now, I drove it a couple of months ago in Spain and I came away feeling that this was not a car to get your pulse racing, but it was one that definitely knew how to calm it down. Its focus is very clear, that's comfort and luxury, and on those counts, it really impressed me. Well, what we have to see is in our Indian conditions and with the engine in a slightly different state of tune, because I drove a different one there, can it do the same? Well, to begin with, it really doesn't look like the Volvos we know. Those strong Volvo haunches give way to a sleeker, more sculpted rear. And though it has a lot going on with the inset for the logo, the cuts and creases and the C-shaped taillights, I really like the rear because it is so different. The side has a coupe-like profile and a strong shoulder line that goes straight across from bonnet to boot. It sits on 18-inch 245-45 tyres and what lends it the luxury feel is the fact that the front tyres have been extended a little further forward, giving it a larger axle to dash length and meaning a huge wheelbase. The long bonnet extends out culminating in the grille with 23 concave slats that's taken from the Volvo's iconic P1800. The grille is flanked on both sides by those ever so recognisable Thor's Hammer LED lamps. There's no two ways about it, it is a smart looking car. The interior spells luxury in big, bold letters. There's a nice flat leather wrap dash, Napa seats, pure wood accents along the car. And of course, that now familiar vertically set infotainment system that takes pride of place in the center. Yes, it does tick off all the right boxes. And then there's the fantastic sounding Bowers and Wilkins system sunroof and a whole host of goodies that you get. Well, considering this is the luxury segment, most owners are going to want to be in the back seat. So let's begin there. It's a really comfortable back seat space. There's plenty of it. In fact, I'd go so far as saying is I think this is the segment leader as far as legroom is concerned. The seats themselves are really comfortable. If there's one thing that's lacking a little bit, it's under thigh support. It could have done with a little bit more. Still with the amount of legroom, it does allow the rear seat passenger to sit with legs crossed or stretched out so you can get really comfortable. In addition, there are side blinds and the touchscreen for the climate control for rear passengers too. However, there's no rear sun blind. Now what's really impressive is ride quality. It just smothers the road. When I saw those low profile tyres, I was a little bit worried as to how it would be in our conditions. But I have to say, whether you're low speed ambling along in city traffic or cruising along a highway, it is just like you're gliding along. It's truly impressive. It's flat and composed and definitely puts another big tick on the luxury box. The only time you can feel the suspension is over sharp-edged bumps. But even that is milder than most. It does stiffen when you drive it in dynamic mode and it's not as pillowy as it is in comfort. But the impressive part is even in dynamic, it still feels darn good. What else is really good is cabin insulation. I mean, this just shuts off everything from the outside. There's just no engine noise, no sounds from the outside, no wind noise. You really feel cocooned inside. I could sit in this back seat forever, but I have to change over. And Nikhil, if you could stop, maybe I could get behind the wheel.
The version of the car I drove on my earlier test drive in Spain came with a D5 engine with 235 HP and power pulse system. But this D4 engine doesn't have that and it comes with just 190 HP and 400 Nm of torque. Well, like I said earlier, this engine won't get your pulses racing, but it's no slouch either. It gets up to triple digit speeds in a calm and smooth manner and pretty easily. The acceleration is linear and you don't find a sudden surge of power at any point. It feels its strongest between 2000 and 4000 RPM, so you find overtakes quite easy. From the outside, the engine really doesn't sound refined, but inside the cabin, it's a whole new story. It's barely audible. It settles into a cruise quite comfortably and it never feels underpowered or out of breath. And on the flip side, it's equally comfortable dealing with city traffic and low speed conditions. The gearbox is a little slow to react when you want that sudden burst of power. It takes a little time, but it responds better to a gentler foot. There are no paddle shifts because this car doesn't pretend to be sporty. But you can put it into manual mode and that gets rid of any lag time on the shifts. There are three driving modes, Eco, Comfort and Dynamic. When you do want an extra dose of energy, Dynamic offers that up quite well, sharpening the throttle response and quickening the shifts. Now with the focus so strongly on luxury, you know, needless to say, this doesn't really engage you as a driver and it feels a little soft around the corners. But it still gives you a good measure of security. You can carry a fair amount of speed. And needless to say, you know, straight line stability is really, really good and you feel extremely planted and safe. The lane assist safety system works well, as we found out, on the single lane highways. Every time we wanted to overtake, the little light would flash and the steering would vibrate and offer a small amount of resistance. But it's not the best application on our single lane highways because we do need to weave past traffic. So I switched it off. But on an expressway, it would be great. What the S90 also offers is the park assist feature. You have to drive by a parking spot, the car assesses whether you can fit in and lets you know if there is an available space. All you have to do is use the gears as instructed and it does yeah. the rest. Being a Volvo, there is also a strong list of safety features. One has to mention here that Volvo has only 16 showrooms around the country, so its reach is not as strong as its competitors and after sales is a factor that's important to Indian customers too. At launch, the Volvo S90 will come with only one engine, the D4, and in one variant, the inscription loaded with all the bells and whistles at an expected price of around 55 lakh, which puts it right up there with its competitors. Now, it does a fabulous job of being a luxury car, even in our conditions. And being inside the cabin is a calm and soothing experience, whether you're behind the wheel or in the back seat. It makes a very compelling choice in its segment and you'll definitely feel like you've got your money's worth. So, should you buy one? Well, if luxury and comfort is what you're after, most definitely yes.